today from something you forgot along the way. Uh, today's story is number 35. Treat high and low alike. Bismarck. I too am a shoemaker. German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, 1815 to 1898, once went deep into the countryside to see some land he had purchased. The arrival of a train there was an event, and people would gather round to see who had come. Anyone out of the ordinary soon became the talk of the town. The village shoemaker, a particularly curious fellow, who liked to spread news, took quick note of the tall and powerfully built Bismarck and watched as he stepped onto the platform, seated himself on a bench and lit a cigar. What an extraordinary man, thought the shoemaker, and respectfully approached the mysterious visitor to see what he could find out. Pardon me, sir, he said, but have you come from Berlin? That's right. You are a man of fine build. What do you do? What do you do, countered Bismarck. I am a poor country shoemaker. I too am a shoemaker. The two men continued their conversation until a uniformed man came up and said deferentially, Sire, your carriage is ready. The shoemaker was stunned, realizing he had been addressing a man of high station. He humbly apologized for his affrontery. Bismarck replied affably, Not at all. If you should ever come to Berlin, please stop by my factory. The address is 76 Wilhelm Street. The villager never dreamed that he had been speaking to Bismarck, the blood and iron chancellor showed himself to be a genial man of the people, one who treated all alike, high and low. Okay, it's kind of a funny story, <laughs> um, but also a very powerful message. It's funny because the village shoemaker, when he approaches this mysterious visitor, Telling, he, he tells him, you are a man of fine build. What do you do? Yeah, usually we don't make a comment about people's physical appearance. But this um, village shoemaker, he was so amazed that uh, he just spoke his mind. Also, it shows how sincere he, he was. Yeah, no filtration and censorship. Just whatever came to his mind, he spoke. So actually, this shows one truth about human nature. Most people, they're very curious um, about other human beings. They want to gather information. So if we realize that, you know, also people have anxiety when they meet someone new. So they want to ease their anxiety by asking questions. So we can interpret them positively instead of kind of becoming paranoid or thinking, oh, what a horrible person this is, wants to learn all about my life. If we are always practicing proactivity instead of reactivity, we are in control. We can answer whatever we want to answer and refrain from interpreting things too negatively and then labeling people as evil and then ruminate over it and go and tell even other people we encountered what a bad person. That's not good for a spiritual person who cares about the karma they create. So, yeah. So um, if someone asks you a question that you don't like, you can ask them, why is this important to you to know? Uh, why do you ask? So we can gain some information. So that's exactly what this chancellor did when he was asked, what do you do? He countered, what do you do? And uh, yeah, so that's one thing we learn, not to get threatened by people's behavior, but instead practice the parameter of wisdom. We can only do that 
if we are already <laughs> developing our parameter of patience, which is easier than parameter of wisdom. As we go down the list of six parameters, it gets harder to practice. So yeah, if we create that space in the mind and heart, uh, cultivating patience, we are not quick to jump to conclusions. Um, yeah, so that's something beautiful the story is teaching us. Uh, not to react, but to respond and take a proactive stance. We are in control. We are, we can empower ourselves anytime if we believe in the law of cause and effect. My causes produce my effects. Other people's causes do not produce my effects, according to the Buddha. And then the other story, uh, message, which is probably the main message, is about uh, treating everybody equally, high and low. Yeah, the text said this chancellor showed himself to be a genial man of the people, one who treated all alike, high and low. Actually, if you look up the word genial, it means friendly and cheerful. And in the Latin senses, it's like... Uh, mild and conducive to growth, which I was very touched by, to be conducive to growth. Because, you know, we all have met some people who are not friendly, they don't smile, and they give us the impression that maybe they know it all. And uh, you cannot have conversation with them or even have an impact. They're not so much conducive to growth. Maybe they don't even think that life is a spiritual journey. It's all about growth and finding our best version, the best form of happiness that we, we deserve as a human being. We're not born to suffer. So, uh, yeah, so this is such a good quality to have, to be friendly and cheerful, smiling. It's the first parameter of giving, putting people at ease. And uh, also this word, according to the dictionary, has something to do with the word genius, which means extraordinary intellectual power marked by very high intelligence, which I think today psychologists, they call it as emotional quotient, like instead of IQ, it's the EQ. Yeah, it's a very powerful trait to have, to treat everyone equally, to be a genial. And uh, how can we treat everyone equally? It's only if we are not working just for money or power, but uh, we are working as a means of bettering ourselves, growing spiritually. I was watching a YouTube video and the speaker was saying, at workplace, there are two types of people. One type of people, they're just there to get a paycheck and to, to provide for the family and the other type they're just there for success they want to climb the ladder of success and these people you have to kind of be cautious about because they will throw anyone and anything under the bus bus and you don't want to be on their path yeah kind of combative or very too competitive we have to be mindful of that those people, they treat people who are beneficial to them as high and good. And people who are not so beneficial to them, maybe they look down on and, or they're just neutral. They don't care. And it comes off very cold and it, it lowers the atmosphere. I mean, it lowers the morale for everyone. Yeah, so obviously we want to know. <laughs> I would say there is a third group of people who are there, like spiritual people like us, who benefit ourselves by benefiting other people. That's the high road where we, why we treat everybody equally. We make effort to do that. So good job, everyone, for being here. Have a beautiful Sunday and uh, take care. Bye.